you guys should have gotten your messages that I'm recording. And we will get going. So first off, welcome to this year's Cybersecurity Awareness Fair poster contest. Okay. Hey, uh, so overall, today's agenda is we're going to go over all the dates and deadlines. We're going to talk about the prizes. We're going to talk about your final entry requirements. We're going to talk about the day of the event itself. Um, we're going to talk about the judging criteria, your video recommendations, past examples. We're also going to talk about the job fair, and then we'll do a conclusion. So as far as dates and deadlines, all these are available up on the um, website. So when you guys enter the contest and use that, that's where you'll also find these same deadlines. But the first deadline that's coming up soon is your um, video deadline which is October 14th at 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So upload your video presentations. Um, no late work will be accepted and we don't take any excuses. If you don't get the video uploaded and in on time, we basically drop you from the event. Um, I also highly encourage you, um, based upon the entries and the way they came in, like almost the last hour for everything, do not wait. If your video is done on the 12th, go ahead and get it uploaded. Um, a, it'll make it easier for our team to set up the pages that we're doing for your poster contest um, entries. And B, it prevents any problems. So there's nothing that we get in the morning saying, hey, I couldn't upload. Um, so it's on you to do it on time and get it uploaded. It's not on us. Any questions about that? Chris, I've got a question. So if the video is a large file, is that going to be an issue? This is Google Drive. We can take as much as you guys can send me. It's going to a, a drive. It's not an email. No, it's going to Google Drive directly. We'll cover that when we do the video part. Okay. So um, on October 17th, that's the day of the Cybersecurity and Awareness Fair, um, bring your poster to the event. Uh, we've had people that bring their posters where they've got a piece of cardboard, they've got you know paper, whatever they're trying to do, and still trying to assemble your poster. Have your poster... Mm -hmm. 100% ready for the event. Um, the event runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So be there at 9 a.m. You're going to see a lot of chaos in the rotunda of the Bronco Student Center. We've got, you know, speakers, vendors, clubs, everybody trying to set up and get their thing act together and get things going. So it really helps if they're there at 9 a.m. sharp. Um, as far as the judging goes, <clears throat> it's going to start at approximately 10 a.m. Um, Dan will basically meet the judges that morning, get them set up as far as judging, getting their iPads and everything ready to go, and then they'll be coming around to you. So be ready to start judging at 10. There is no specific order. So they can just start picking by number. They can pick wherever they want, but... Um, don't assume the judge is going to come to you next, depending on what's happening and what order they decide. Um, all of the judges' decisions are final. We've had some challenges in the past year where people felt, you know, hey, my poster was much better than this poster. Um, all that we judge on is what the judges say. Um, we do bring in judges that come from industry that have years of experience dealing in cybersecurity and with different topics. So they are professionals and know what they're talking about. So we have to give them their respect. And like I said, all decisions by the judges are final. Um, as I said earlier, make sure you check in on the second floor rotunda in the Bronco Student Center. Um, there is the map and information there. Um, if you need a parking permit, for those of you that are coming from, we've got people from Cal State LA, Cal State Long Beach, uh, Wilson High School, Troy. So email me and we will get you the parking permit so that you know how to park. Prizes. So this is what you guys are mainly in the event for, I'm sure. So we have first place is going to get 1,500, second 1,250, third 1,000, fourth 750, and fifth is going to get 500. Um, the way that we distribute the prizes is after the event, we announce all the winners. Um, they'll be posted up on the website, and then we will be contacting you. There is a person that is in charge of getting you paid. Her name is Cynthia Morgan. And we're working on the details, but she is the one that's going to be contacting you in order to get you paid. We have had challenges in the past. Um, ironically, 
last year, for whatever reason, um, we actually had two winning teams not get their prizes. So we sent them emails for almost six, eight months, and we were never able to pay them. So I really want to pay you. So pay attention and look for the emails from Cynthia Morgan and our team after the event. Once you know you won, we will let you know in emails who won, what place, and all that. So everything, everything we do, we try and be as transparent as possible. Um, there might be taxes depending on your situation. Um, you're responsible for it. And if you have a team that's more than one person, um, we divide the dollar amount. So if you have two people on your team, you'd get seven fifty dollars each. Um, any questions about the prizes or payment? Okay. So your final entry requirements. This is what you must do in order to basically win a prize in the contest. So we need your abstract submitted to EasyChair in the format that we asked for. We need your video. We need your poster. And we're going to need your presentation on October 17th. So we'll kind of cover a little bit more about your presentation, but that's when you are getting judged. So your video, once again, um, I am trying to repeat a lot of things to make sure you guys are well aware of what it is. So before October 14th, 11 a.m., upload your video to that folder. You will receive this presentation in an email. So use that link to find the folder to upload it. Do not wait until you know 11 p.m. that night. I promise you, I will not answer your email. I will not help you. Um, it is up to you. You are all you know, competing in this contest. A lot of you guys are graduate students. Some of you guys are new in high school, but this is your opportunity to win a prize. So if you wanna do it, make sure you do everything on time. The format for the file name is your last name, underscore the title of your abstract or the title of your presentation in MP4 format. Um, again, no late entries accepted. The length of your video must be eight minutes or less than eight minutes. Do not exceed eight minutes um, or we will disqualify you. Um, your team member, each member of your team must be in the video. So this. Chris, you have a question in chat. I've got it. You got it. So just the leader. So if you have like two people, um, whoever you picked as your leader of your team, that's whose name goes on the file. And I already answered that question. So basically to answer your question, as far as um, the slides will be available, um, like I said, I'll send this out in an email after the meeting. When I say each team member needs to present on the video, what do you mean by does it matter if it's digital? MP4 format is digital. Um, okay, this is where I'll show you examples of the videos at the end. Take a look at the examples uh, from previous years and that'll give you an idea. It's up to you how creative you wanna be and how you can do it. Um, I'll get more into detail to answer your question, Anna. Okay. Um, yes, each team member must be in the video with their smiling faces and all happy and talking about cybersecurity. And then the visual materials must be comprised of your abstract content and the poster only. Um, make sure the content is actually readable on the screen. One of the things that our department does is um, accessible technology. So if people can't read or see what you're doing, um, there's no point of it. And you also have to consider we're going to transcribe the videos. Um, so make it as best as possible so that somebody can read it on the screen if you guys are gonna show some video or graph or chart or whatever. Okay, your poster requirements. Okay, this is like the bane of my existence um, over the years in that we have put the specifications of the standard 36 inch high by 48 inch trifold poster board that you see at every single poster contest. Um, People will show up and they might cut up a box and try and use that. Um, people will get very creative with their posters. We do not want creativity. We want everybody to have the exact same poster um, because again, when you're being judged, it makes it easier for the judges and it just makes it overall for the event look much better. 
You guys can find the boards. Um, I did a quick look online. Um, Walmart goes anywhere from three to seven dollars online. Office Depot seems to be selling them for about thirteen to eighteen dollars. So you can pick whoever you want. Um, just know we will not reimburse you for the cardboard or any of the materials you'll use. You know, the spray glue or whatever, however you put your poster together. Um, using the same template that you guys uploaded when you entered your abstracts. Use that. Um, like I said, you can use spray glue, adhesive, whatever you want, but we don't reimburse. I know some people will go to, um, Costco used to do it with their printing services where they print out your poster on the large board, I think, you know, Office Depot or whatever. You can do that. They look gorgeous. Um, that'll end up costing you like anywhere from $50 to $100. I can tell you that your presentation as far as standing in front of that poster Talking about your poster with the judges and being able to answer their questions is significantly more important than making your poster look pretty. I mean, you want it to look professional, but it's how you interact with the judges and how you can explain it as far as your content. I, I would emphasize that um, make sure you don't have any typos. Make sure you don't have things that you know, might stand out in a negative way. So it's, it's like when you do your resume. Correct. And sometimes it's better to keep it simple. You don't have to put everything, you know, on your board. Have, you know, the main concepts, have like a chart or something, but be able to talk about it. Less is more, honestly, from what I've seen over the years as far as who wins. Um, make sure in the top left corner, it's got your school's logo. It's got your presenter's names and ages. Um, and also, like I said, the poster session format, again, you're trying to transcend like the conventional question and answer format. In most cases, this is our peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. So when people come by that aren't the judges, you might have high school kids, you might have graduate students, you might have professionals. Be able to really talk about your topic and like, how are you going to, you know, potentially change the world with what you're doing with your poster? Um, you want concise oral summaries. Um, unlike the way that I'm kind of ranting along in this um, presentation, you want to be really present yourself as an expert in the industry the best you can. And also try and get deeper understanding and engagement. You're going to get some conversations with people. Um, like if one of the judges I think is coming, he actually worked on like that whole Vegas breach that happened about a year and a half ago. So he can talk to a lot of what's going on in the world. Um, I have some people that might be there from three letter agencies, et cetera. So be able to talk to them and get a deeper conversation going. The better that you can get that conversation and the more detail you can get, your odds of winning definitely go up. Chris, would you um, have any recommendations on a uh, type of camera to use? Do some entries use an iPhone? What, what, what do you see the, in terms of the, the way they're shooting it? I think... You can do it with any smartphone. You can do it as a Zoom session. It's how you want to represent your presentation. And one of the things that we use the videos for is sometimes the judges like to watch all the videos and everything beforehand. So you might have been, you know, kind of pre-scored and then all the questions they had, they get to ask you in person. So it depends on the judging staff that we get, but that's one of the reasons why we do the videos um, because our judges' time is precious, so. Any other questions? Okay. So I, again, um, I'm very redundant and trying to repeat things a lot. So make sure we get all the points across. So make sure again, you're arriving on campus, um, no later than 9 a.m. Parking is a challenge. If you have never been to Cal Poly Pomona, know that you're going to have parking. You will be parking in parking structure two and for our guests. It does fill up quickly, so you might want to get here earlier than 9 a.m. some days. Otherwise, you might be wandering around on campus. Um, if you're not from Cal Poly, you're going to get an email from Michelle once you send us the email that you need a ticket. So email on the previous slide, CPP or CyberFair at um, Cal Poly or CPP.edu, and then we will get the parking. Michelle's going to be the one handling your parking. Um, if you get it in, Monday, we'll have you all taken care of, um, basically by Wednesday. If not, we will come and chase you somewhat. Um, when you check in at the front desk, 
you're going to get a name tag and a lunch ticket. Your name tag obviously has your name on it. We're going to put your school's logo and we're gonna put your poster number. Your poster number is really important because we have a secondary contest running. Um, all the voters or all the people attending the event are gonna be doing a stamp contest with all the vendors. On that form, there is a place to enter your favorite poster. So you'll be getting judged not only by judges, but by all the attendees at the event. So be aware of that. Um, you'll also get your lunch ticket. Um, lunch is gonna be in Perseus. So you can take that out over starting around 12.30 p.m. Um, get your lunch, you can get back your poster. If you wanna take a minute in the room, um, like if you've already been judged, you can take a minute in Perseus, eat your lunch and then come back. Or if you wanna shift like your teams, but do your best to make sure somebody's always there. Um, you can even potentially eat at your poster if you want to. It's up to you. I don't, I'm not gonna control what you guys or how you guys eat your lunch. But there is, like I said, a small place in Perseus to eat. The room's not very big, so I can't take all of you at once, but um, the option's there if you need it. Um, make sure you wear your name tag at all times so that it's clearly identified by the judges and we know who you are. Um, like I said before, the judges are from industry, government, and education. So be prepared for any of those classes of people talking to you. Make sure you are engaging with attendees to discuss your topic. I know towards the end of the day, it can get boring, but understand that somebody that couldn't come to the event at you know 10 a.m. needs to have the same experience if they come at 1 p.m. So do your best to make sure you're always taking care of the um, people that are coming to the event. Um, like I said, be ready to answer questions from various perspectives and discuss your research, research in depth. And then, like I said, as time permits, get your lunch in Perseus to claim your lunch. Judging criteria. So when the judges are coming and looking at you, they're gonna be considering the relevance to cybersecurity. Um, what is your case as far as like in the world, what, are, what, what, how are you gonna make a difference in the world with the topic you're talking about? Um, originality. So, is your hypo or your original hypothesis supported by research? Are there any new insights that you have? Is this something that you just went into chat GPT and created content and came to the event? Or is this something you actually know and have real insights and can talk about it? Um, it shows your originality or creativity. Um, again, try to use your mind, not AI. And make sure it addresses a new problem or an old problem in a different way. So when you're talking to a judge, um, I'll just pick on like passwords. You know, everybody knows back in the day, you know, eight character password, um, we could beat it with various tools very easily as far as Windows. Um, you yeah, know, then salting came along. And now you have, you know, quantum cryptography baking passwords. So what is the problem? Is there a new problem? Like, you know, quantum cryptography is the newest problem. The old one was salt and hashing. So can you talk about some of the deltas between that? Um, Make sure you have depth to it. So if you are talking to somebody that's been in the cybersecurity field for 20 years, can you compete with their knowledge? You know, how well have you read about the topic you're talking about? Can you answer the questions, you know? And then the overall quality of your submission. So when a judge goes and looks at your abstract, your title, your poster, and what you did, they're gonna judge all of that. So any questions about what they're gonna judge and what they're looking for? Nope. So your video recommendations. So when you guys are gonna shoot your videos, one of the things, um, if you're gonna be on screen, dress professionally. Um, you can do like newscasters where you have, you know, a suit on top. I don't care about your shorts on the bottom as long as we aren't seeing them, but make sure it's clean and you look professional. The other thing is when you come to the event, one of the things that Fullerton College used to always take first, second, third place. One of the main reasons they did that is they dressed professionally. Um, that was a big topic for Anna Carlin. And honestly, if you had a good looking poster and you were dressed professionally, you would beat some of the students that might've had a better poster or better topic just because you presented yourself better. Um, look at the concept of elevator speeches. Um, that's what you're basically doing. So when you think about going into a job interview, you're gonna dress professionally. Um, and present yourself in a way that's very professional. So do the same with your videos and also do the same thing at the fair itself. Um, make sure you check your lighting and audio. Um, 
Can I actually hear you on it? Um, are there any weird shadows? Um, just make it a good, you know, um, video. Make sure you establish eye content. Go. Would you recommend that they could students consider doing several takes and reviewing the video takes? What you know, each time they do it to, so yes. they see it. No, practice it. Like I said, look at the ones from last year. There are some tremendous videos that are up there in our past examples. Um, Sacred Heart did a really good one, if I remember off the top of my head. So take a look at the Sacred Heart one. They had a lot of fun with that video and did a great job. And I think they ended up getting second place, if I remember right. Um, so definitely do your best to make this a professional polished video and do whatever it takes to get it clean. Um, but I can tell you, Trong um, won the one year. He had one of the toughest videos to watch. Um, he was English as second language and he did just the plain Zoom video, but he covered the topic so well that even though it wasn't a great video, he explained the topic, you knew what he was doing, even though it was a really like kind of technical presentation, um, he did a tremendous job of just explaining it. And that made the difference. He got first place. But make sure you state your learning objective or your problem statement. Um, make sure you have, you know, short statements and figures throughout it. Um, you can point to specific parts of your poster. Um, if you're doing Zoom, you know, highlight it. But make sure you clearly um, speak clearly to viewers. And the last one, or one of the last ones is, make sure that you're gonna be talking to people all around the world. Um, these videos are shared and viewed. So we have some of them that have thousands of views, some of them have hundreds of views, but we don't know who the audience is or who you're talking to. So if they have no idea, they're not a professional, you need to make sure you're talking to that person that doesn't necessarily know. Um, discuss your presentation, don't just read the script. Um, practice it to where you can have it towards just natural speech and a comfortable talking tone. And then relax and overall just have fun. Um, the whole event is supposed to be about having fun. So this isn't supposed to be a hard project for you. I know eight minutes in video can go really quick um, if you have a good team. So just have fun and make it a fun video. So on this page, I've got your links to the past examples. Um, Danica and Amber were absolutely amazing. Um, so you can look at theirs, but they took post-quantum cryptography, which two years ago, um, not everybody knew about it, but they got into it as far as actually creating algorithms and doing a lot of analysis. Great, great presentation. They actually went up to ISACA LA and presented it at their spring conference. So you might have the opportunity, if you do a good enough um, job on the poster, you might get invited to the spring concert or conference, just so you know. Okay, we're almost done. So after the Cybersecurity Awareness Fair, we have the Cybersecurity Workforce Job Fair. You guys as contestants at the fair are more than welcome to come to the job fair. Um, we have companies, um, you might've heard of the Central Intelligence Agency. We have Abinad, there's Convergent, CrowdStrike, which I know everybody heard of it a few months ago. Um, but there's other companies like the Orange County Department of Education. General Atomics is gonna be there. Um, if any of you guys are into drones, I promise you, you want to talk to General Atomics. Um, we have SCE, the health department and the utilities agencies. All of those, if you are getting ready to enter the workforce are tremendous opportunities to potentially get an internship or an actual job, or in some cases, if you just talk to um, like Corey White from Cybertar, he will actually talk to you about entrepreneurship. He'll talk to you about, you know, opportunities in your career, where the industry is going. So these are leaders that have been around in the industry for a long time. I highly encourage you, even if you're not ready to enter the job market, go talk to these people. And if you're a high school student, you are welcome to come here. Your job, and Dan can talk to this, is to get every single one of these recruiters onto your LinkedIn so that when you get continue through education, you keep talking to these recruiters, letting them know what you're doing so that when you're ready to get a job, you know who can get you past HR and directly into potentially getting hired. It is critical I, to get these contacts. I want to mention something about LinkedIn. 
You have an option when you want to connect with someone to add a note. I highly recommend adding a note so the person you want to connect with knows why you're connecting. Because I get connection requests, most of the ones from students, they don't add a note and it gets very frustrating. But I'm sure for these companies, if you have an individual from these companies that you meet and you want to connect on LinkedIn, they would appreciate a short note. Oh, very good point. Do you have any questions about the job fair? Okay. Um, what do you mean, Jose? So you're asking, or I'm talking to Jose, you're asking for other way to get information from the job fair. Yeah, um, you're getting if you a can't, Yeah, if you can't make it, you're out of luck. So it's only three to six and it is what it is. So for the video, is there a humor editing allowed? Okay. <laughs> so that's where I was referencing the... Um, Sacred Heart video from last year, go to our YouTube page and look at the Sacred Heart video. They killed it and had an amazing amount of fun in their video. It doesn't have to be you just standing in front of a poster. You can have fun with it. Um, it's how you want to make that video to present your poster topic. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Yes, I can't stress enough going back and looking at the years. And one of the things you'll see that's kind of funny is, you know, a video from four or five years ago. Um, the topics, you know, obviously some of them were dated, some of them are still relevant. So get to know it and then look at, you know, like during COVID, some of the videos were all just the Zoom type videos. And then as we come out of COVID, people started to have fun again with the videos. So again, I want this event for you to be as fun as possible. <clears throat> I want you to have a good time and basically just represent your schools and hopefully not everybody can win, but I think there's 17 entries right now or 18. I'm not sure on that number, but you figure five people out of 17 are going to win. So your odds of winning are actually decent. So it's up to you to make the difference. Um, for the career fair, yes, you want to have a resume. Um, do you recommend well, resume the, screw fair preparations? The resume would be handed out during the job fair, not during the poster session. Correct. So basically, 10 to 2 is the main fair where you're going to be presenting. And then there's an hour break while we set up the room. And then when you go to the job fair from 3 to 6, that's when you have your resume. So one of the things that you can do is you've been talking all day, kind of like I've been talking. Um, count the number of vendors that are on the job fair page. Um, right now, I think it's nine or 10 vendors. So you probably want to have about 10 resumes with you. Um, but like I said, you'll want to probably go, you know, we tell all the clubs that are doing the demos during the day to go freshen up you know, get pretty. They're usually wearing the cybersecurity fair t-shirts. So they go get dressed up and they're all professional when they come to the job fair. It's kind of funny having seen them all day long. So it's up to you. You don't have to, you know, refresh yourself, but just be prepared. The biggest thing when you are doing an interview or going to a job fair like that is you have to be prepared with your elevator speech. You are selling yourself so why would I want to buy it? So just randomly, I'll pick on, you know, Michelle Lamb. If she showed up to the event, I would need her, you know, to basically not be shy and say, hey, here's my resume. It's, hey, you need to hire me. And this is why. So Google, you know, doing elevator speeches. Um, there's a video on our website that's a little dated as far as doing job fairs. 
but I highly recommend you take a look at it. Um, those elevator speeches and knowing how to present yourself, you know, make sure if there's a card available, get the card. If not, get their LinkedIn contacts. But you need those contacts in a job market the way it is right now and how the world is changing. The, getting to know those actual recruiters, the ones that do hire or get you in, you have to have these contacts. Because when you're sending out resumes and AI is reading them, there's no personal touch. They don't care who you I, are. I want to emphasize, this is what I tell students. The most important quality for you to have is passion. And the fact that you're doing this poster and going to the job, the cyber fair shows passion. But the most important skill, and this is a learned skill, is human networking. You only really get good at this through practice. The more practice you have in networking with people, the better. Yes. And one other thing to understand is I'll pick on the CIA. The CIA will go to the main fair itself. They're going to talk to the clubs. They will come talk to you as poster contestants. They will basically screen the room from 10 to 2. They will know who they want to talk to. So when you get to the job fair and they see you, you would actually possibly get an on-site interview. So just know that will be happening. And other companies will also be going through the different demos and everything. Um, they do want to see your soft skills. You know, can you present a topic? Because when you get to, you know, the real world and you're working for a company, you will end up doing presentations. So can you do a presentation? Can I put you in front of somebody for a million dollar contract and sell whatever widget it is? So these are skills that are very important. Um, it might not seem like it while you're doing the poster contest, but you are actually learning a lot. And this is stuff that you can actually put on resumes and stuff like that in the future. You know, <laughs> I do see it as when people come back, so we've been doing this for 20 years, but you would be surprised at how important events like this are. Chris? Yeah. Um, I'd like to go over a couple of points just to reiterate um, for the for the students. Um, for to go back to the idea of pictures, you want to make sure your pictures are clear and precise. You want them to say something um, and, and make sure that they're clear and in focus. Um, the other thing was uh, make sure you dress to impress. And even if you look good on the video, make sure that when you're doing a presentation and you're talking to someone that you're ready for the job. Um, um, if you don't know something, say so, um, that you're more than happy to learn about it. Um, but be creative. And the other thing is that uh, you talked about the soft skills. Can you talk to other people? And then the last thing is that know what's on your resume and be able to talk about your resume. As uh, Chris said, you know, you want to sell yourself. And um, they're going to read what's on the resume, but they want to hear it from you. So, um, you know, that's your, that's your chance to shine. So that's what I have for you. Okay. Um, that's all I have. If you guys want to grab this, this is our YouTube channel. And there's also some really good videos on there. Um, one of them happens to be um, from Sharina Hengesthorn. That um, hers is titled "Bridging Tech and Tradition." She actually, um, like I said, was a student assistant of mine. She now does websites for some company called Apple that you might have heard of, but she does them in the uh, Pacific Rim. So dealing with all the different laws that are outside of America um, is huge. So there's a lot of really good information buried in those videos. So I do encourage you to kind of take a look at all the different videos. So Chris, there was a, a question about expressing interest, whether you just say the word cybersecurity or something more specific. And I posted a link. There is a way to look at how broad this field is in terms of 
work roles and competencies and tasks. You want to get familiar with this because you want to know the choices you're going to have when you go out there and start taking a look at what you think you might be more interested in. Yes, and the other thing is, after this event, you can always contact myself um, if you have questions. Dan, if you have questions, I mean, we've been around for a long time, so we are always happy to help you. Um, if you want to learn more about cybersecurity or different opportunities that we might be aware of, so feel free to engage us. And, you know, I said, we're here to make you, make you, help you have fun and learn a lot. I mean, we want everybody to be successful. That is all I have. Um, you will see links um, for the, I'll send you the presentation um, and I'll send you a link to the video. Um, so if you want to rewatch this tonight, because it was such an exciting video, um, it will be there unless you have any other questions left. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.